Okay, so welcome back. And then today I'm gonna try to read the uh, read uh, chapter sixteen, like a special regression. So this is a uh, kind of a, another another important aspect of the special data analysis to to identify the what's the relationships between the outcome and and independent variable uh, when they actually have a those values actually have a specially all correlated. So, so that's the kind of thing. Actually, chapter 16 is a kind of, uh, I would say about the simple, because this is a just kind of a, just kind of a matter of uh, how we can remove the geographically weighted, uh, geographically weighted effect, like a neighboring effect, and then try to analyzing and interpreting the relationship between the outcome and and independent variables. So in here, actually, uh, it talks about the special autoregressive model, which means whenever we what what actually what is the basic assumption of the, this special regression is uh, when we have uh, this kind of uh, maybe spaces like this, okay. And then maybe I would say about the maybe number twelve of this unit gonna be the maybe I would say about the number of crime in that block group. I would say that means maybe if if there is a kind of a special oral correlation effect in that across the space, that means based on the Tobler's law. The closer one, maybe it might say about the 10, or maybe this one is maybe six. Maybe in that case, we can say that there is a kind of a special oral correlated effect, like a special oral correlation between the, the across the space, because the closer, cl uh, the neighbor, which is the, which is the uh, things close to the, uh, close to each other, gonna have a, tends to have a similar outcome variable, a similar outcome, similar uh, similar observations. So that means if this neighborhood has a 12 crime, that means maybe in the neighbor, it also had pre, have a pretty similar value that is highly likely to have a similar value. If that's the case, we can actually say about the special special or correlated, right? That's the how this is about. And then uh, what the special regression, uh, regression is about is whenever we have uh, like a Y variable, and then maybe this is uh, actually kind of a basic, basic regression formula, right? Here is outcome. And here is the y-intercept, and then here is the uh, coefficients of the x, like an independent variable, and then the u is the error term, right? But when we actually have a special regression, it actually com it actually have a like formula like this: beta zero plus beta one, and x, and then uh, rho and w plus Okay, so it in this case, this W gonna be the what is called the geographically weight, and then the law is actually a kind of a coefficient about the geo uh, that represents about the constant variable of the geo correlated kind of a, uh, deviations things, and then U is the error term. Okay, because uh, in chapter 16, when you read uh, this chapter 16, you can actually find that uh, they actually approached the special regression for the multi-level kind of approaches by using the some of the analyzing the random effect of the uh, of the geographically weighted matrices. So. So that means it's a kind of a more like a geographically weighted kind of a regression approaches. 
especially for the when we actually have a geo or uh, disease mapping kind of things like uh like uh, when we actually have a uh, both special plus temporal temporal variable in that case maybe multi-level kind of uh, like uh, approaches summarized in chapter 16 gonna be work very well because uh, when we say about the disease mapping it is a kind of like a, there is a time sequence right t1 t2 t3 etc right and then each time has uh, their own map right and then uh, their own kind of a uh, uh, spread of the disease, right? If we, if that that is the case, maybe maybe multi level uh, kind of uh, uh, approaches summarized in chapter sixteen is uh, highly highly helpful and useful to understanding about how those diseases gonna be spread out, uh, especially especially spread out over time. In that case, we can actually this multi-level and then micro random field kind of approaches is very useful. And also, also we can actually do the, uh, apply to the, this multi-level approaches when we have a cross-sectional, cross-sectional kind of a, a, a special data too. But the thing is, in here actually, uh, chapter 16 only explains about the multi-level approaches because uh, I think that the other thought about uh, this kind of a geographically weighted matrix is kind of a randomly kind of a kind of a I would say uh, autocorrelated across the space, which is also 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 right uh, assumptions. So when we try to uh, in this case maybe multi-level kind of approaches is that. We can actually we actually assume that this geographically weighted matrix gonna be the random. Uh, we can just kind of a random effect. Try to understanding the random effect of the these things. What does that means is actually in the normal uh, when you are looking at the the other textbook about the special regressions, actually there is a two kinds of the special regressions. One is the special lag model and then the other one is special error model okay what does that means is actually whenever we actually try to set up the, this kind of a formula based on the analyze interpreting the this kind of a neighboring effect and also when we try to looking at the, this kind of a special oral correlated relationship across the space among uh, among the our observation in the data, the way we can looking at the, this kind of a special oral case oral correlation is the two way. There is a two way we can examine the, this kind of a special correlated. The first one, like when we say about the special lag, is the actually special oral correlations actually come from the. Uh, come from the actually this kind of a response variable or observation or variation is the uh, autocorrelation between the observation in the response variable, which is the Y variable. So that means uh, special lag is actually come from the these kind of uh, actual observations. So that means those values are the very highly correlated. And then uh, in that case, also independent, there is also independent variable, which actually have a same kind of a variation with a, this kind of a Y variable. When we're looking at the special error, that means actually those kind of a special oral correlation actually come from the, this kind of error term, like a U, okay? So that error actually kind of a making a highly oral correlated to the one another, like uh, what is when we say about the, this kind of a regression, regression residual gonna be highly auto correlated across the space. If that's the case, we can actually using the what is called a special error model. But when we try to when we think that this x variable actually highly 
especially auto correlated to one another. Also, when we looking at the looking at the data set across the space, that means this kind of a geographic this kind of a geographic geographically weight kind of a matrix is gonna be lim, uh, focusing on the removing the this kind of a special or correlated relationship of the x variable to to find out the relationship between the x the, between the x and this y or correlation effect okay so so that's the that's the kind of a two types of the special regression but in here in chapter 16 the author is actually setting up the this regardless of the special reg and error model uh multi-level model approaches is a just kind of a geographically weighted matrix is a highly random kind of a effect as a kind of a multi-level kind of a regressions and then based on that we can actually say, uh, see that the, this weighted matrix can be applied to the either x or U value whenever it has a there is actually oral correlated effect in the multi level model. Actually, what I just explained is the just kind of a basic summary of the chapter sixteen as a whole. Okay, is there any kind of questions you want to ask? Um, okay, so, uh, so basically. We, uh, of course, if, if we can do spatial regression, uh -huh. we are considering the geometry uh -huh. in addition to uh, uh, as a predictor. Mm -hmm. uh, predict allocation, so in that case, uh, our uh -huh. time could be. Uh, uh -huh. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm just reading it. Um, but in this case, uh, so we, uh, I see that in the chapter there's a, there's an example where they use uh, something that we already uh, mentioned uh, in, in the previous chapter about the dependence. Mm -hmm. The question is, what, how, um, so let, let's say that I uh, like to, um, and I look at the uh, relationship between uh, the number of infected, let's say, uh, on a particular region mm -hmm. and um, some other predictor, uh, I don't know, such as temperature or uh, population. Uh, yeah. So I'm, let's say I'm going to use uh, the number of infection as a, mm. my response variable, and then mm. temperature and population, and then geometry. Mm. Right? Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. The question is, what is the what? Where are the weights? Yeah. Oh okay. uh, yeah, because uh, the only difference between the normal regression and special regression is, as you can see here, I actually writing the formula but in here we the thing we actually try to consider is uh, this one like uh, in here actually it, it is actually symbolized as a z value like a fixed design matrix this is actually what is called the neighboring neighboring geographically geographic uh, weight matrix like a geographic weight matrix so there is actually a set of the kind of a neighboring and then there is a actually set of the like like a binary or a standardized uh, standardized weighted value in here, and then uh, this matrix is gonna be used in here, and then uh, that actually allows us to the remove the, the neighboring effect before we conducting the regression, and then after the removing the this neighboring effect. We can actually try to uh uh try to interpreting the relationship between the y and x variables as a coefficient. Okay, that's the kind of a how how special regression works, and then that's the also kind of a way of the why we have to 
using the these kind of geographically designed matrices because uh, the first thing we have to do is uh, there is always neighboring effect going to be happen across the space. That means we have to figure out how we can adjusting the actual observation value, filtering out, which is the filtering out to the, these kind of geo uh, geographically relationships. Because uh, those observations definitely have a, have a kind of a, or, uh, correlated to one another across the space. So how we can remove the, those kind of a neighboring effect by using the, these kind of a geographically weighted matrices is the key to conduct the special regressions. So in case of the special reg, we only cares about the neighboring effect is the de dependent on the our x variable. Special error is the our or special oral correlation actually come from the error term like a regression residual. So that's the kind of things. But regardless is the where those neighboring hood, uh, neighboring effect come from, multi-level model which, and also what is called the geographically weighted regression, which is the GWR. There is also GWR model. That actually just kind of a setting up the weighted matrix as a kind of a random effect. So that can be possible to the either response reflect the random effect, neighboring effect of the either response and error term residual. By doing that, we can actually consider both neighboring effect in the inside the one model. And then that allows us to the interpret it or get the more accurate estimates of the of the special oral correlation relationship and then we can actually understand the relationship between the X and Y. So that's the how this one is about. In here, actually, others actually try to explain about the like using the CAR model, like a conditional autoregressive model or simultaneous autoregressive model in here, SAR and CAR, which is also kind of a, another way to the approaches. But this one is a kind of like a, I would say about the, a little bit complicated because uh, this one is uh, just kind of conditional oral regressive approaches is uh, special oral correlation, correlation is actually happen depending on the sum of the conditions of the neighboring effect. And then the simultaneously auto regressive model is the, those special auto correlation effect is highly randomized across the space. So that means that neighboring effect can be occur can occur either response or error term. So we don't know yet, but simultaneously simultaneous tenuous autoregressive model allows us to consider both of the both of the neighboring effect inside the one model. So we don't have to worry about those things. That is also kind of a similar approach when we try to do the what is called a geographically weighted regression model. Okay, we just are setting up. So what does this this simply say is whenever we have whenever we find that there is a kind of a special oral correlated relationship when we try to visualizing visualize our uh visualize set of the map of the uh. Uh, response outcome variable and then a set of the independent variable when we try to visualize those map mapping and then when we thinking when we actually testing about the Moran's index etc and then uh, we can find that there is a definitely uh, special oral correlations going to be identifying across the map that in that case we have to thinking about the uh, how we can remove the, those kind of a special oral correlation like a, a neighboring effect, okay? It actually depends about depends on about the how our observation gonna be mapped out across the space. And then we can definitely recognize about the, those kind of a, a relationship. So so what, what I just say is maybe here is the kind of a space like this, okay? And then maybe we can have a, there is actually this kind of a 
uh, like uh, like this kind of a clustering set of a clustering gonna be found. That means when whenever we actually have uh, run the Morenz index, they definitely have a kind of a maybe somewhat positive or somewhat high value of the special order correlations. In that case, we actually thinking about the to identify the sum of the relationship with of the these kind of a uh, special oral correlation effect. In that case, we actually use the special regression model, right? But when we have uh, this kind of a maybe highly dispersed or randomized kind of a relationship like this. In that case, we can actually not identify uh, special oral correlation relation. Oral correlation is not clearly identified compared to the, this one. In this case, we, maybe when we try to do the Morenz index is almost close to the zero. That means that there is no special oral correlation relationships across the, our observation. So in that case, we don't have to worry about the neighboring effect. And then we just uh, learn the, our just kind of a, like a normal regression. Okay. But when we try to visualize in our observation, and then there is a definitely have a special pattern, uh, like this, like a clustering pattern, or maybe definitely some of the special oral correlation relationship among the observations across the space. In that case, we can use the special regression model. And then how we can do the special regression model, it is actually uh, try to creating the, what is called the geographically weighted matrix. And then we adding those special geographic, uh, geographically weighted matrices inside the model. In here, it actually uh, to actually apply a uh, uh, geographical matrix is gonna, uh, it was applied applied as a kind of a random effect of the model. Okay. So so that's the thing. And then when you scroll down here, actually it is about the like how we can. This one is how we can try to try to setting up the how we can uh reflect the, those kind of a uh, special oral correlation effect like uh, these kind of a simultaneous variances kind of a formula to identify the this special oral correlation parameter like this and then this w gonna be the uh, gonna be the calculated and then uh, when we how how geographically uh, weighted matrix is look like is maybe for example if we have uh, this kind of a uh, a b c d e f d h i kind of a special unit in that case we have a uh, a b d c through i and then also the same column through the A, B, C, through I, and then uh, maybe uh, actually what does this mean is the symmetric and then the strictly, strictly positive means it is maybe if the geographically matrix is, is the binary, binary matrices, in that case, when we try to do the A, a is the neighbor is the B of B and D and E in case of the Keynes matrices. So that means like uh, we can say zero, one, and then maybe D is one and E is one. And then other that other is a zero like this. And then uh, this kind of a, uh, this kind of coding can be, can be continued across the matrices. And then uh, whenever we looking at the, uh, looking at the value that is a highly symmetric is uh, in a di uh, diagonal kind of a, uh, when we're looking at the, this kind of value is a highly symmetric based on, based on the, this kind of diagonal 
di diagnosis kind of a uh 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 barrier setting. Okay, I would say that's the what W is the symmetric and then a positive uh the definite. Like it is a kind of a, in, in case of the binary one, it is a matter of a zero and one. That means this one is the neighboring neighbor neighbors of the what like a B and D and E in this case. So that's the, how we can set up like a geographically rated matrices. And then we can also form the this kind of a set of the formula. You don't have to worry worry about the, how this kind of a formula works. But how this one does is that after the geographically weighted matrix is created by using the that geographically weighted matrices, we can also calculate about this kind of a auto correlation parameter to see the what's the what's the degree of the clustering or special auto correlation relationship across the, our special units. Okay. That's the, how this set of the, this formula is going to be used. Just kind of a matter of calculating the, those special auto correlation constant variable to to get to the more to get the more constant value of them optimizing the neighboring effect removal. Okay, to remove the neighboring effect. All right, this is a kind of a kind of a very basic uh, principle and introduction to the special auto uh, regressions. And then in the bottom one, like uh, in here, author is actually using the he set of the example by using the Boston House value data set. Actually, it is uh, actually like a 506 census track level. And then uh, that the outcome variable in this case is the housing price. And then that housing prices definitely have uh, auto correlated across the space. So that means maybe there is a what housing average housing prices of the census tract A is a one hundred thousand dollar. Maybe its neighborhood, its its neighbor of the that, uh, that neighbor tends to have a pretty similar value of the housing prices. Based on the that assumptions, we can actually learn the what is called a special regression model. Okay, so in here we just kind of simply read about the. Boston housing value data set by using the shape file. And then as we know, we already cover about the poly to the neighbor, which is the this one is the kind of identifying the neighbors of the of the housing prices observations across the space. In this case, there is a there is a no options in here. So I think that it this one is actually kind of a queen's. Pins lose, which is a kind of like a pins relationship. So every edges, if any neighbors touch the edges, gonna be have a uh, uh, neighbors. And also MB MB two the list W is uh, this one is actually creating about the geographically weighted matrices. In this case, W means kind of like a more like a standardized weighted kind of a value. Okay, and then we can actually have uh, this kind of a uh, median house values in the table, and then the left and right actually represents about the censored censored variable, which means we don't have any kind of a uh, uh, definite valid kind of observations. Uh, in these 17 census track. So that means we have to remove those things in our model to the special, to get the, get the more right special correlating effect. And then what you can do here is just kind of set up the kind of aggregations and then uh, uh, depend, uh, defining the, our model. And then at the bottom in here, after the cleaning of the all of the these data set, like a census track aggregations and the uh, creating the these kind of a uh, neighboring uh, geographically weighted matrices and also these kind of a weighted value extractions, def definitions, and then we can actually set up the multi-level model. This is the basic formula about the median means the median housing price, and then uh 
we can actually have listing the set of the all of the these kind of variables such as the criminal rate and age of the house and then the industrial zoning or some other kind of characteristics in here and then we can say that uh, uh, across the our census tract id have a kind of a random effect because uh, depending on the these housing prices actually kind of uh, falls within the uh, uh, our census uh, variance uh, barrier have a barrier variations across the our census tract which is the census tract id and then we can actually setting up the, this kind of a multi-level model as kind of a normal regressions and then what you can do here is uh, when we try to when we have uh, this kind of a w kind of a weighted matrices we can actually try to setting up the, this geographically weighted matrices as kind of a conditionally autoregressive kind of a uh, situations in the this by using the, this kind of a hierarch what is called the hierarchical generalized linear but a uh, linear model kind of approaches. And then random is a kind of like a sense track ID across the space. And then that random kind of ID actually can be adjusted based on the, this kind of a geographically weighted variable. And then this space things, and then INLA very, uh, is, is kind of a matter, uh, matter of the like a base base kind of approaches is the same approaches to the uh this multi-level at the top but base is a more like a kind of like a markov, markov chain kind of a relationship so that means a more like an iterative kind of a process to until we get to the converging value of the coefficients inside the model and then the inla means uh, when you're looking at the dead housing uh, that Boston house value data set, maybe when we actually thinking about the special temporal relationship, which means the changes of the housing value over time across the space in Boston. In that case, INLA kind of a packages is the very useful to, to conducting the, what is called a special, uh, temp, uh, special temporal statistical analysis uh, in terms of the regression approaches to the these kind of a sem uh, spatial temporal statistic approaches, okay. So, so other all, and also GAM model is a kind of a highly nonlinear kind of a reflecting the high highly nonlinear relationship across the spaces of the these things. And then whenever we actually Either any anyhow we when we try to learn the this kind of regression model, and then when we try to looking at the deep kind of a special oral correlations, kind of a uh, uh, coefficients, when we looking at the coefficients variation of the coefficients across the space, we can actually find out that these kind of a uh, coefficient variations depending on the geographically weighted matrices. Okay, like this. And then SSR is a kind of an error kind of things when we're looking at the residual. It is also reflective of the special or correlation relationships when we visualizing the, this kind of mapping. Okay. So in here, that's the kind of end of the chapter about the special regression. So, in summary, what you actually keep in mind is uh, just kind of a special regression. When we try to conduct in the special regressions, it is about the matter uh, issues about the, how we can define the special uh, geographically weighted matrices, and then uh, how we can apply that geographically weighted matrices inside uh, maybe just normal regressions or multi-level kind of a random effect, or maybe some of the disease mapping approaches by using the INLA, or maybe base approaches to get to the converging kind of a value through the iterative kind of process to get to the uh, value of the converging value of the uh, of the coefficient between the X and Y. 
And then when we visualizing the those kind of coefficients variations or custom map, you can actually find that these kind of uh, maybe there is a definitely special or correlated uh, correlations. You can definitely have uh, these kind of a variation gonna be identified. Uh, in in terms of the uh special coefficients between the x and y. And also same for the when you're looking at the regression residual, you also find out that this kind of a error regression residual kind of a special oral creation correlated relationship of, uh, between the this kind of a error term across the space. Okay. Because when you're looking at this yellow and green and red one, it definitely has a clustering pattern of the of the error, right? So that means each uh, neighbors actually have a pretty similar value of the error term and also similar value of the coefficient, regression coefficient, okay? So that's the end of the chapter 16. And then uh, do you have any questions so far? Um, no.